Hi, this is Chuck out here at Midori Farm. And today I'm gonna to be seeding some brassicas. Brassicas are a family of vegetables uh, that include cabbage and broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, and actually they include a lot of radishes like daikon radish and things like that. But today I'm just gonna be planting the ones that we're most familiar with, the cauliflower, two varieties actually. I have this purple of Sicily and then this standard white cauliflower. I've got this beautiful red, uh, red express cabbage. And then uh, I've got some basic kale. And I'm gonna be planting these seeds in these small containers in which I actually bought some uh, transplants of cabbage and broccoli and other brassicas like that. I love reusing containers. And like most farmers, I seed some of my vegetables and I buy some transplants and uh, kind of mix and match. But you might think, well, why not just buy all your transplants? It saves so much time. And I gotta say, when I was a really new farmer, I did buy all my transplants. I didn't plant any seeds at all because it is so much easier and faster just to buy transplants. However, it is more expensive. And also you're limited in the uh, varieties that you can, you can get. You might be able to get something like this. Probably you'll get something like this in your local home center and maybe even some kale. But these special heirloom seed cabbages and cauliflowers that are so unique, especially things like heirloom tomatoes, you're probably going to want to eventually learn how to plant your own seeds. So that's what I'm going to show you what I'm going to do today. I'm going to plant these in these 10 cell planters and each planter is going to get a couple of seeds in it. So I'm going to have 50 or 60 transplants coming up of each variety in this single container. And it has this handy little carrying thing that I don't take away um, because it is quite convenient to move it around. But I've put everything into this tray so it is easy to move in mass. Now what I'm going to put into my planter is pretty simple. What I put in there is basic compost or heavily, uh, something heavy in organic matter. Um, that's not only gonna give a nice medium for, for the plant to grow in, but it's gonna hold water. Uh, this organic matter really likes to absorb water. So that's a great reason to put that in at the bottom of your planter. Now, of course, all these little cells have holes in the bottom of them, you can see. So any excess water is gonna drain off. But what this, um, organic matter is going to do is it's going to hold on to some of that water and not let it all drain off so the plants won't need as often watering especially if you're like me and you sometimes forget to water or you don't have time this is kind of a lifesaver literally as it'll keep those plants alive for maybe even an extra day if you're lucky but certainly if you forget in the morning until evening time they might be all right so i recommend just giving you you know, maybe filling it less, maybe about a third of the way full with this uh, compost or other organic matter. Um, that will probably be enough. Doesn't have a lot of nutrition in there. But the seeds really don't need a bunch of nutrition at the beginning. And then I'm going to use some, uh, some potting mix that I made. Some of it I saved from my last batch and some of it I've remixed. And you, you can go online and find lots of different recipes or formulas for your potting mixes. And I recommend you do your research. If you're organic like me, you don't want to put any chemicals in there, of course. So you want to avoid any of the store-bought mixes that add chemicals. You'd be surprised at how many chemicals they'll put in there, even in just in the form of fertilizers. And one thing you may not know is chemical fertilizers are often very attractive to things like aphids because uh, those aphids get in there and once they, they hold on to these uh, little baby plants, boy, it's really tough to get them away from them. And you will probably lose the lion's share if not all of your babies. So I recommend you try to stay away from any sort of potting mixes with chemical fertilizers and any other sorts of uh, harmful things in there like that. And again, these seeds really don't need that much food just to start their own lives. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open my seed packets. 
I do like to open my seeds upside down, just like that. I'm gonna pour them out into my hand. And it's quite easy just to take a few and scatter them around in each cell. Now, don't be afraid to throw some of these seeds away. I mean, you are gonna get sometimes 20 or 30 or up to 50 to 100 to 200 seeds per pack. Now, most gardeners and farmers really don't need that many. I mean, if you're of a massive scale, that's one thing, but don't be afraid to just let some fall away or stay in the pack or something like that. Now, I do like to label my seat, my pack, so I'm gonna put that right there so I can remember which one that is. Same thing for the Red Express cabbage. Again, just dropping a few in each one. These brassica seeds are usually not so large, but they're they're spherical and they're quite easy to really manage as far as spreading them out in each cell. And here I have just too many, so I'm just gonna let those go back to nature, so to speak. On with the cauliflower. I do like cauliflower, but it's a bit of a wasteful brassica. Something like a cabbage or a broccoli is not only gonna produce the first, the first head for you, but then after you harvest that, it's going to produce a few more for you. If it's a cabbage, you can get the one large first cabbage and then uh, three or four smaller cabbages. Or if you prune away uh, all but one, you can get another second cabbage. It's well, about two thirds the size of your first one. Again, just too many seeds here. So we're going to let those go. That's my white cauliflower. But cauliflower is so good, so I do grow it anyway. Even though it seems a bit of a poor cousin compared to the broccoli and cabbages, which just keep on coming. And I especially love to grow stick broccoli or broccolini, because that is the stuff that you just get stick after stick after stick after stick. And you could get 30 or 40 sticks per plant. And boy, those are just perfect bite-sized pieces to just chomp away in a salad or boil them for just two minutes or steam them, and then eat them with your favorite dressings. Even this kale seeds, when you start looking at them, you can realize, oh yeah, these are almost the same looking in size as my cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower seeds. So it's easy to understand that these are in the same family. Again, I've just got way too many of these. And while I do have some customers who really love kale, in general, people feel like, ooh, kale. What am I, being tortured? But I think kale is a great vegetable. It's one of the best vegetables for us if you're looking for high vitamin and mineral content. Now what I'm gonna do is just take some basic potting soil, some topsoil, really lightweight, and just give it a nice, oh, I'd say, half centimeter, about an eighth of an inch cover on these little seeds. You can do your research online. Most people say, don't put more than two to five times uh, as much soil as the size of the seed. So if the seed is quite small, you really only need just a little bit of soil on top of there. Otherwise, that, that baby is really gonna have a hard time making its way to the top. And some of the seeds actually prefer to have a little bit of sunlight when you from the scrub. So do your research. There's a lot of information out there. You'll be able to get on your way to seeding your own plants. Now, that those are all set. Make sure they're nice and even. There we go. Okay, got a lot more kale seeds, which I'm gonna kind of hold on to in the pack. I'm gonna fold that up, put it right there, because kale is one of those things you can pretty much throw anywhere in a corner of a garden or your yard or a plant or something like that, and it'll come up big enough. And once it's up, any size is edible, and the smaller, the better for salads.
I'm gonna go ahead and water them in. Make sure my setting is set quite low. Give them a nice top water like this. Make sure I let the water go through. Make sure everybody's nice and wet. And again, these seeds like to be kept damp and warm, not too wet. You wanna let them drain away. You don't want them to be uh, sitting in uh, standing water. Uh, that's no good for the seeds at all because the seeds actually need some uh, oxygen and some CO2 to respirate. Other and underwater, of course, they can't. So you want, you want to make sure your seeds aren't floating to the top. I don't see any, so I must have given them a good cover soil. And that's all there is to it. Now these will sprout over the next week or two and we'll check back in to take a look at them. And hopefully you'll be able to get to be planting your own brassicas pretty soon. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Chuck out here at Midori Farm. We're gonna take a look at the seedlings that we planted last week, all the brassicas and seed trays. This is my kale. You can see it's nice and rich. It came up in just two days. It was the first one to show its face. This is the red cauliflower, a purple cauliflower, doing really well. This is the white cauliflower, really tall. And here's my red cabbage, not doing as well as I'd hoped. In fact, only one's looking really good here. And this will happen sometimes. Either the seeds are inviable or human error, which is a, often the case. And it's just learning as you go that when you put seeds in soil, it doesn't always mean they're going to succeed. So what do we do next? Well, now that our seedlings are coming up, what are we going to do with, for example, these kale seeds? They're not all going to be able to grow for very long in these small cells because there's 10 to 20 plants in each small cell. And so, as you can see here, we've already started taking some out. And what we're doing is creating a 10 cell seed tray with one plant per cell. You can see these have just been laid in there. They're not looking very upright yet, but in about a day or two, they're going to right themselves, start growing back towards where the sun shines and start getting bigger and stronger, ready for transplanting in a couple more weeks. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is we take one of these, again, the same seed trays we used for the actual seeding, and we put about halfway full of soil in each cell. And I'm using this special seed, seedling soil, so you know it's gonna be good. And then we're gonna take these seedlings apart. This is the seedlings out of one of the trays. And what you do is, with these, actually, there's two raised ridges on the bottom that when pinched together, makes it real easy to pull that soil block out in one big piece, just like that. And once you've done that, you can easily tease apart each seedling. And then you're gonna lay that down right there into the middle of your soil, one per cell. Now, if you do have trouble separating them, what you can do is submerge the root ball in water. Let the water really get the, the soil away from them and then gently massage them and then gently pull them away. You'll find it's quite easy to separate these seedlings out when they're at this stage. Just like that, until your whole seed tray is full of seedlings. Just like this one. And then you're gonna take handfuls of soil Gently cover those up. Now, of course, you don't want to cover up the leaves, but you can cover up part of the stem. Until you get it to this point where all the seedlings are covered with soil. And then there's two ways to water. You can water from the top, or as I like to do, what you can do is you can take your seed tray and submerge it in a larger container that's full of water. Now wait a couple of minutes. And these seed trays, as you can see here, have these holes in the bottom of them. And that's of course to allow excess water to drain through. Well, those same holes are gonna allow the water to come up into the seed cell, into the soil. That soil is gonna kind of suck up the water just like that. So once it's submerged in water, you just wait a few minutes and it'll be nice and watered from the bottom just like these have been. So, 
That's an easy way to get your seedlings from point B to point C after they've sprouted, separating them out into their own cell, letting them, letting them get larger and stronger so you can put them out on your farm. Stay tuned and please join us next time for when we actually have the seedlings ready to put into the farm. See you then.